Ladies and gentlemen, we do know that if there is one place that needs a bit of order, it is KwaZulu-Natal. There's floods, there's riots, there's E. coli on the beaches, and most importantly, there's ANC running the whole place, and it's a bit of a nightmare. So in order for order to occur in KZN, there might be a solution to that. And joining me, of course, is Byron. Tell me the details, Byron. Yeah, so this is the news. We covered this before, actually, on a on a segment. I think you interviewed um, the head of the DA in KZN. You may recall that you did an interview with him, that's Dean McPherson. And uh, during this, we actually talked about how the DA and the IFP had written up a co-governance agreement where they would basically work together in order to tackle the ANC and to get them out of key municipalities in the KZN area. So here we are, folks. We are Helen's boys, as you know, Ramon and I. Helen, we still love you. You know where we are. Anytime, give us a call. But uh, here we are. We've seen that now they have co, they have put together a co-governance agreement in a specific municipality, whereby the DA is basically saying they will not be taking the key. That's the key lead. And they are basically encouraging their voters to support the IFP in order to topple the ANC. They're basically saying, vote for the IFP, we'll give the IFP support, the IFP will be the lead and we will be the support, which I have heard from mainstream media, that never happens because apparently the DA is run by Debasi John and he's a racist. So what do you make of that? And arrogant. Well, I, I think it takes out the, the the wind in the sails of the DA is just arrogant. It's like, well, they're giving up a, a key ward in favor of the IFP to take out the ANC. There's not much arrogance in that. It's such a KZN story, though, because the previous ward councillor was an ANC guy and he was killed because <laughs> he was a ward mm. councillor. They keep kidding each other in that mm. side of the world. So interesting that the DA refuses to take part. I mean, they take part in a supporting role, but essentially it would be IFP versus ANC in that particular ward. And the IFP, as far as I understand, has overwhelming majority favor in that particular ward. So the IFP could very well take it with the DA's support. This has happened in the past as well. The ANC did not partake in some of the wards in the Karoo in favor of the Patriarch Alliance, I believe, and, and a few other parties. Over yeah, there. that's how they landed up as the lead there in the first place. Indeed. So what, what is interesting about the story is that the ANC in KZN are actually not doing that well. <laughs> they are held up in Etiquini, or Durban, as we like to call it by its uh, Christian name. Uh, Durban is held by the ANC because they have these very small shitty parties supporting those uh, the ANZ. It's like these are like 27 parties voted with the ANC. They all have like one seat. Mm. That's a very shaky coalition. If you're able to take away the ward councillors from those parties through these by-elections, that's a smart move. Absolutely. And let's not forget that actually one of the reasons that the ANC is held up by some of these smaller or shitty parties is through the PR system. So the PR system basically says if you were on the ballots and you got enough box and enough ticks and enough votes, but not enough to actually take the ward, you get a proportional representation. Basically, it's like a second vote, like well done for being involved and you get a councillor position anyway. It's kind of like the official opposition type benches. You do fuck all apart from take a salary and just sit around and moan. So basically what the FF does, I suppose, in Parliament. But the key thing is that a lot of these parties have taken these roles. Now, you remind you very rightly pointed out that the ANC keeps killing itself in KZN. This is not a new development. This has been going on in Durban, as we like to call it. My birth city says on my passport, I was born in Durban, not at Etiquini. But anyway, the point is that this these killings have been going on for some time. In fact, quite often, sometimes they go into council meetings, the guy gets voted in in a key position, walks out of the Durban municipality, goes, yeah, hey, I just got voted in, gets shot on the front doorsteps. Hmm. The killings have been going on since I was a child. In fact, in those days, it was the ANC versus the IFP. And those kind of political killings went on for some time until the Zuma era when Zuma basically created his 50 million little branches everywhere in KZN and used lots of crooks and crannies in order to get himself elected as the kingpin of that province. But what now this shows you is that with Zuma's decline, and as we've discussed on previous videos, the ANC is a party of personality, out of sight, out of mind. 
If you're not inside, people don't know who you are anymore because it's just about personalities. And Zoom is not inside anymore because he's old, he's corrupt, and he doesn't really have anything to add. So that being said, the ANC's popularity in that province is disappearing. And it's natural that the IFP would take back their heartland. Yeah. So it's great to see that rather than the DA sit there going, no, we want to fire for top dog. We can see that you could take back your heartland, but we want it. The DA have basically said, well, we want to side with the anti-commies. In fact, there's one guy in our commentary sections that says, oh, the IFP would side with the ANC any day before they ever sided with the DA. And what that shows us is that these EFF lovers have zero understanding as to what the IFP actually stands for. The IFP in their own constitution is anti-communistic. They will not side with the EFF or ANC because their ideology distinctly doesn't match. With that being said, the DAC, the IFP, is a better route to governance in that, pro that province than they themselves. And that's the story. Indeed. And uh, we're going to come back just now. But first, a quick advert from our sponsor of the video, Tarkmach. I'm sure most of you know that South Africa is not a normal place. I mean, the July riots of a year ago is very indicative of that. So if South Africa is not normal, why are you settling for normal tactical gear? Which is why we at Morning Shot refuse to use normal tactical gear. We use Tokma. Tokma creates the best versatile battle-hardened tactical gear in the entire country. Gear which is versatile, reliable and ready to serve in any environment. From medical pouches to magazine holders, Takmach has the best tactical gear for your next hunting adventure, expedition or even your ride prevention exercise. And for viewers of Morning Shot, you get a special discount through our link which is in the description below. And we are back. And interestingly, I think you're completely right. The IFP, you know, they deserve KZN. The IFP has a very strong history in terms of Zulu nationalism and owning KZN. It's the only party the Nats ever tolerated as, as a black nationalist organization. They actually had quite a good rapport with the National Party during the course of the apartheid days. And the only reason why they were diminished so badly was because the ANC killed them off in the People's War. And also, a lot of Zulus moved over to the ANC and Cyril managed to use that KZN as his stronghold as a Zulu chief, for lack of a better word. But now that there are no Zulus... Even though he's not Zulu. Jacob Zuma is Zulu. Oh, did you say Jacob Zuma? You said Cyril, mate. Okay, well, I do mean Jacob Zuma, so apologies for that. Mm. But now that Zulus are not represented in the ANC in any meaningful way, the natural inclination of the IF, of Zulus is to go back to the IFP. Because now they see that the RAT faction down there in KZN are a bunch of clowns, for the most part. The IFP actually stands for something that is Zulu-orientated, Zulu nationalism. So therefore, as the ANC crumbles in Zulu support, we can assume that the IFP support will increase. And therefore, the DA making a deal with the IFP makes complete and utter sense. It's quite smart. Yeah, and I agree with that. I think that it's also smart for the DA not to try half mm. the IFP's vote and rather to prop up the IFP in that province in order to take out the ANC. And it would be nice if some other clowns in a green-led party, not saying who, would actually realize that halving the DA vote doesn't really support the country, does it? All it does is it gives you a, your own little cult of personalities, even though your political leaders have the personality of a dried, dried paint. But at the end of the day, you know, the, the DA have made taking the smart route on this thing, which is to say the IFP have a better chance of leading that province than we do. We'll support the IFP. That will also mean that they will have a seat at the table. It might be a supporting role, but they'll at least have a seat at the table in order to help improve the, the governance of that province. And yeah. that's very encouraging to see. It is quite. And, and also very important, D. McPherson is the head of uh, the DA in KZN, who we had on our show uh, previously, uh, said that they're open to talking with any small party in KZN based on the right, under the right circumstances, and that, that United Front can push the ANC out of that province entirely. And this is completely, how can I explain it? This is obviously true. If the IFP wins this ward, and they win more wards with the DA support, smaller parties who might be looking for some to ingratiate themselves to the new levers of power will gladly flock towards that little coalition block, removing the power from the ANC and Etiquini under that 
bullshit coalition that they've got running there. It makes no sense mm. for small parties to hold the entire province to host, uh, hostage if they're on the losing side. So they'll, they'll switch over to the winning side, but perhaps they will have to you know, relinquish a bit of that power they have with the ANC. We will see, but overall, the trajectory mm. is IFP resurgence, ANC decline, and the small parties in between will have to make a choice in time to come. Yeah. And for me, I'm very supportive of this. I think the IFP could be a massive, really good force for change in that province. And let's not forget that that province is one of the key provinces to the ANC in order mm. to keep its stronghold. So if that province goes to the IFP, which basically goes red, I quite like it, same color as the Republicans, uh, you guys have got my vote, then what we really see is that the province down in the Western Cape remains blue, that province goes red, and the rest of the provinces all remain green and brown, brown for the shit stains that they have on them, which is they remain like that whilst the the DA continues to govern it, sorry, the ANC continues to govern it. Although arguably, where you are, in Gauteng, that will also go blue in 2024. Yes. So that means three potential provinces that the ANC have lost, leaving them with kind of like the back sloppy seconds. Like mm. where you live. Yeah, like where I live. <laughs> That's right. So imagine all the big metros and the big provinces are controlled by the opposition. Mm. That's a the good reality post 2024. The pattern mm-hmm. network of the ANC collapses completely. It's good news for mm. everyone. No use complaining. So let us know in the comments. No. Are you going to complain about it? Do you live in KZN? Is your beaches filled with human feces? You know, just say what you want in the comments. That's why they're there. You know what I find really curious though? If they do lose all these provinces, like your province, the Western Cape's gone, and KZN is gone. That's where the bulk of people in the country live. So let's just say they cling on to power just by sheer numbers of the other provinces. So they win, let's just say they win, you know, Mpumalanga, Limpopo, uh, yeah. Northern Cape, Peace. Eastern Cape. Peace Fucking Cape. no one lives there, well, apart from me. But, you know, at the, at the risk of sounding like really weird, like how would they then be able to go to parliament and claim to speak for the voices of the people? Because the people didn't really vote for you. So, and they don't have the, should we say, the majority of the people voting for them in the first place. They may win it by sheer numbers, maybe, or maybe they stole a strongest force. But like their ability to walk into parliament and demand legislative change will be non-existent. Man. And well, that's exciting. It depends on the numbers of parliament, but it, it goes back to that, those trends. The ANC trend is downwards because the people who vote for him are rural and uneducated. They get, you know, they, get, they, they die from COVID or they die from AIDS, or they die from not getting a social grant. Mm. So the demographics is against the ANC based on that. The demographics of KZN, Kauteng, the Western Cape are younger. The demographics of everywhere else is older, um, but those people tend to be less educated, less wealthy, um, and young. So mm. the trends are downwards for the ANC all over the place, but it's good for the DA and the IFP to get together to just hasten that demise a little mm. bit more. And I think for me personally, the, the big fundamental point that we should also take from this is there is a key party missing from all of these agreements, notably the EFF. So where does that leave the EFF come 2024? Too early to say. But anyway, let us know down in the comments down below. Thanks for watching, everyone. See you in the next Cheers. Time. Cheers, cheers. Bye.